Abraham had many sons, and many sons had father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord, right on, father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord, right on, left on, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord, right on, left on, right foot, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Turn around, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, turn around, sit down. <laughs> all right, so come back here, Zayn. So last week, during our uh, Sunday family devotional time, we looked at David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. And so, what do you guys remember from that story? Was Goliath smaller or bigger than David? Bigger. 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 A whole lot bigger, right? And so, David was facing a pretty big challenge, something that was pretty difficult for him to do on his own. But one thing he did was rely on God. So... For you guys, uh, what's one thing that was tough or that's been tough where you had to ask God to help you with? So, so you. Chance, what's one thing that was tough for you and ask God for help? When people do challenge and I don't know, and I pray for God to help me balance when I was riding my bike in the grass. And the first time I did it for two seconds and then... I did it for three seconds. All right. So God helped you to do it to help you balance and stay up longer? Yes. That's so cool. Nice, nice. All right, Zayda, what's one thing or something that was difficult for you where you had to ask God to help you? Um, one thing that was hard for me is when I had to do all my schoolwork. And I was really frustrated that I had to do all of it in one day. And what happened? And so what happened? I prayed to God to help me to um, concentrate and focus on it, and it really helped. And it was it less difficult to do? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It was. It was. So thankfully, when we live life and we go through tough situations, we're going to do things on our own. We can ask God to help us out. We hope you guys have an incredible week and that God gives you the courage and strength to make it through challenging situations. Bye. <laughs> Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, to start our service today, I want to actually have us call out to God in prayer. There's a few things, a few um, sisters actually that we need to be praying for and I want you to uh, remind you to look at your weekly announcements that have been emailed out to you for all the details uh, of these prayers and other uh, announcements that are, are there also uh, but right now I want us to be praying for uh, our sister Patty Vire uh, she recently had surgery this past Thursday and uh, is uh, at home now uh, recovering and we need you to be praying for her uh, also the father of our sister Wakita Jackson uh, Michael Beach passed away on December the 3rd and Wakita and her daughter uh, have gone up to New Jersey to be with the family uh, and be there uh, mourning the loss of her father and also our sister Elizabeth Pixley we've been praying for Elizabeth uh, for some time now and uh, she has been admitted to Atrium CMC University City Hospital and is being evaluated for hospice care. And Tamika Dowd, uh, as many of you know, is uh, her daughter and is making her way 
here uh, to Charlotte to be with Elizabeth. So we want to be keeping those three sisters in our prayers uh, in a great way. Uh, let's pray right now. Dear Father, we praise your holy name. We lift up you. We thank you so much for Jesus. And Father, we want to lift up the name of Elizabeth Pixley, your daughter, our sister. Uh, Father, to be with her, uh, comfort her body, her mind, her spirit. And Father, we pray that you will be with the family in a great way as Elizabeth right now is being evaluated for hospice care. Be with Tamika as she travels. Uh, keep her safe. Keep the family safe. And Father, I pray that we can have the words from you uh, and the manner in which to speak them, Father, but that our spirits will be one of great love and comfort. But Father, ultimately, your spirit is what is needed. And we pray that for Elizabeth. We pray that also, Father, for Wakita, who just recently lost her father. And as she has made her way there to New Jersey to mourn him, Father, I pray that you will strengthen her and the family in that loss. And we pray that you will strengthen Patty Vyer's body. And she's just recently had surgery. Uh, we pray that she will uh, overcome it and uh, do a great job, Father, in her uh, rehabilitation. Father, we come to you this morning in great need uh, and preparing our hearts and getting us uh, ready, Father, as we worship, as we pray, as we live this life that you've given us, Father, that we can be shining lights uh, of Jesus reminding people of Jesus. And God, I pray that together we can truly build a, a city on a hill that uh, will shine the light of Christ. And Father, as we uh, try to figure out and wrestle uh, what's happening in our world and our society and this pandemic uh, that has claimed so many lives and is uh, really changing the course of our world and our society. Father, I pray that we will be prepared going into the new year, that we'll be prepared mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, and spiritually, Father, that if things continue the way they are now, if they get worse, Father, that we will think of ways to uh, continue to touch one another and to be there for one another, up, holding up each other's arms and that we will not allow Satan to win uh, a victory here, Father, that even though we may be isolated in many ways, Father, your spirit can overcome so much. And I pray, Father, that we are on our knees more, uh, that we are trusting in you a lot more. And Father, we lay this before you right now. And we're so thankful and grateful for giving us you giving us Jesus. And Father, we pray this in his holy, precious name. Amen. My soul, oh my soul, finds a rest in God alone, God alone. Alone is my fortress. I'll 
never be shaken. Alone is my rock, alone my salvation, alone is my fortress. I'll never be shaken, I'll never be shaken, I'll never be shaken. I will sing. Good morning, Charlotte Church, and welcome to all of you who are visiting with us today on our virtual service. Uh, Jennifer and I are so grateful to have you join us, and as always, we pray that uh, at least one thing that we share today will help you in your walk with God. Yeah. The service today is really meant to encourage you, and it's entitled, The Lord Continues to Work. This has been an incredibly challenging year. Uh, it's been filled with uh, all types of things that have weighed us down and uh, challenged our souls, our thinking, uh, our lives. Yeah. And we wanted you to know, along with the, the staff, we wanted you to know that even in the midst of all of that, God continues to work. Amen. And he's done some yep. in, uh, very encouraging things uh, along the way. Um, and we're going to share today some of what those are and how God has worked among in and through the saints here in Charlotte. We've got a special guest uh, also, some guests rather, uh, John and Migdalia uh, Basilio will be doing our communion for us today. And Migdalia and her daughters have a special song for us uh, during communion. And so we really look forward to that. I'd like to introduce you now to the new brothers and sisters in Christ. They have been filled with the Holy Spirit. They've been forgiven of their sins, and we're so grateful Amen. to have them be a part of the family of God. And I'd like to uh, welcome Devonda Patterson, Anthony Harris, Alicia Acosta, Lorena Guzman, Wani Babalola, Laura Montano, Zoe Kersey, and Latia Edwards. That's right. And though we had all kinds of restrictions through the year with COVID, that has not stopped some of you from moving. So we want to welcome those of you who moved here from other congregations, some of our sister congregations. And we welcome Betty Clark, Marquia Verrett, who actually came back home to Charlotte, was here before, uh, Jose and Osiris Granados, Audrey Ortiz, and Cara Tuluenga who came here and also changed her name because she got married. So welcome home. Amen. Next up, we have Yuchina and Crystal Mbanuzwe, who lead our youth and family ministry. And they have a few things to share with you on how God has been working in that ministry. Listen up. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ and friends. My name is Yuchina Mbanuzwe, and this is my lovely wife, Crystal and we lead the youth and family ministry here at the Charlotte Church. This year has been a year unlike any other, but our great God continues to work in our behalf. Yes, one of the ways is the number of teens that have been baptized this year. Jackson Weir was baptized into Christ. He's a junior at Providence High School, an avid baseball player, and is always thinking about how he can reach out and share the gospel with others. He came here a year ago with his mom and dad from Kansas. Um, his mom, Wendy, his dad, Taryn, both have been such a great support in the youth and family ministry, hosting events, reaching out to other parents. We're really grateful for their support. Mm -hmm. And also, Brian Knight and Victoria Bright was also baptized this year, and both of them are doing amazing. They are passionately in love with Christ, sharing the good news and staying in the words. Mm -hmm. Also this year, many of our parents have done a great job as well in adjusting with the virtual homeschool and a full-time job. Some of them have also established a family devotion at their homes and grown in their biblical parenting. 
That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Our teen disciples have matured um, as well, leading in the teen ministry. Uh, we have virtual teen midweeks where many teens have led lessons, led games, and really just become an active part of our virtual platform. The middle school ministry has also seen a new opportunity to come to live this year. Mm -hmm. Yes, the middle school ministry um, has online uh, events and devos, and they have had great attendance, even better than when we were in person. Uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, the virtual option has given parents the ability to have their kids attend and be a part of the ministry without having to juggle traffic and homework and their sibling schedules and the like. Uh, we've also seen uh, exciting opportunity open up that uh, families from our sister churches are yep. able to participate in our middle school ministry. Recently, we had a kickball game and a family from Winston-Salem came from our sister church there uh, just to come and build more relationships with families who have middle schoolers. Yep. And then a great thing about the middle school ministries, Robert and Davina have done a fantastic job and I'm so grateful uh, for what they have done so far this year. And I pray that God will continue to use them in the most powerful way. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Next up, we have Jasmine Henkel, who actually just moved here in January to yeah. lead our campus ministry. She'll actually be transitioning into our singles ministry sometime in 2021. But she's done an incredible job with the campus. So grateful for her help during uh, a year she had no idea what she was getting into. But she's done great. And we're very grateful to have her as part of the team. She's got some special and encouraging news she wants to share with all of you. Following Jasmine will be Harrison and Jackie Ellison. This mm. is a couple who we partnered with our sister church in Atlanta, the North River Church, to work with, uh, really to hire them to be trained in North River. We partnered with them and then they're coming here. They're moving here in probably, I think it's a week now. They'll be starting in January to lead our campus ministry. Right. And Jasmine's done an incredible job building a, a friendship, a partnership with them from afar They've actually started to become engaged with our campus students here. And they will, the three of them, Ellison's and Jasmine, will work together with our campus ministry in the first semester of 2021. But we're really excited to have the Ellison's. They are so full of energy yeah. and excitement, enthusiasm. They love Jesus. They're grateful for what he's yes. done in their life. And they want to make an impact with the students who are disciples here as well as those who aren't disciples yet. So we are very excited to welcome them to be part of the Charlotte team. Amen. Take it away, Jasmine. And now I get to introduce all the babies from 2020. Bryce and Catherine are the proud parents of Emery Millsaps. Samuel and Nadej have baby Nolan Ori. Michael and Corey have baby Oliver Paulus, who many of us have prayed for this year. Trevor and Eleanor have introduced Luke Hansen into their family. Michael and Natasha have baby Michaela Cavasso. Steve and Jing Ai have Abigail Barklow, and that's Abigail with a V. DeAndre and Rachel have brought Kane and Arrington into the world this year. And last but not least, Harrison and Jackie Ellison, our new campus ministers who are coming in January, are gonna be bringing baby Judah Ellison along with them. Congratulations to all the parents. And as a little side note, I just wanted to say how awesome it has been for me to be able to lead the campus ministry this past year. And I'm just so blessed by all the college students in the Charlotte campus ministry. And we look forward to welcoming Jackie and Harrison Ellison to come and join us in January 2021. Good morning, church. Uh, my name's Harrison. This is my wife, Jackie, and my son, Judah, as most of you guys yeah. know. And uh, we are so excited to be leading the campus ministry starting in 2021 up in Charlotte. And uh, we already got our bags packed. If you could see our apartment, wow, it's a disaster. But we are very excited to be up there with you guys. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to share a little bit of good news um, from our own lives um, and before we kind of get into uh, our little blurb about the campus ministry. But, uh, Jackie, do you want to share first? Yeah. Um, so actually, for me personally, uh, this has been a year and a half free of migraines, which is huge because I've struggled with migraines for about four, four years. Yeah. So it's just such a blessing from God that I am able to have a quote unquote normal life. Yes. And I'm also very grateful for that. And uh, something that's been really cool that's been going on in the campus ministry here. Uh, at Kennesaw State, we have seen a lot of fruit in the last couple of weeks, even through 
the COVID season and, and everything, we've had uh, three guys get baptized and seven girls get baptized just in the last couple of weeks. It's been uh, something that we didn't really expect, but it's been an incredible um, encouragement to us and, of course, to all the people whose souls are being saved. It's just been, it's been really encouraging. But we wanted to share that with you guys because we didn't think that, obviously, you would know that, but... Uh, that's been giving us courage this past couple weeks. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to to get to North Carolina, get to Charlotte, and help just create a great campus culture that, you know, won't only in, impact Charlotte, but will also impact all of North Carolina and the whole Southeast. And, uh, you know, we want to give a shout out to Jasmine uh, and just all the incredible stuff that she's done. Jasmine, you have done such an incredible job moving in the beginning of 2020 and being there for a year and pouring your heart out to every campus student and loving them and giving them wisdom. I think all the campus students could say how grateful they are for you and how much they love and just trust you and your walk with God. We just really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And, uh, you know, we really look forward to building a partnership with the students uh, in Charlotte. We look forward to building a partnership with Ethan, with Cody, with Daniel. And with Courtney and Olivia and Wani and Marin and Caroline and Kimberly Fiora and Kimberly James and Caitlin and Tola. We are just so looking forward to building a greater friendship and partnership with you guys, not just spiritually, but also academically because campus ministry wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be much without you know being focused on your schoolwork and focusing on glorifying God in that way absolutely and uh, I didn't mention Michael Michael Williams in those names because he's actually transitioning uh, out of campus to the singles and Michael I just want to say thank you for all that you've done in the campus and how that you have you've positively impacted uh, the campus ministry in so many ways so thank you Michael and uh, again we look forward to seeing you guys so soon Thanks so much. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven with wind, power, and wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above earth with wind, power, and wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Now when he rolled up his sleeves, he wasn't putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very soon, and so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome and God. Yes, we know that he's awesome. Our God is awesome. And he with power and wisdom Our God is an awesome And we know that He's awesome And He reigns With power and wisdom Our God is an awesome Now when the sky was starless In the void of the night Our God is an awesome God he spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. And the judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom. His mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten. Our God is an awesome God. Cause yes, we know that he's awesome. And he reigns with power and wisdom. Our God is an awesome, and we know that He's awesome. Our God is awesome. And He reigns with power and wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom.
Wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Yes, we know that He's awesome. And He reigns with power and wisdom. Our God is an awesome, and we know that He's awesome. Our God is awesome. And He reigns with power and wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. You know, brothers and sisters, ending this year and going into the new year, I want to encourage us with really one simple thing, to choose Jesus. We talked about this a little bit last week, uh, but it's so important with all that is happening uh, in this year, all that has been revealed in this year. And I think you would agree with me that many people in our world, in our country, in our city are not really choosing Jesus. Churches are filled, but many are losing members as well. But I want to call on every disciple of Jesus Christ to actually choose Him and know that He is greater than anything else that's happening in our lives. And I want to take us back to, again, the story of Mary and Martha. And in Luke chapter 10 and verse 
38, it says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Jesus said that Mary chose the good portion. Some translations say she chose what was better. She chose the one thing that was necessary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning from him, engaging with him, being taught by him, being moved by him and giving herself to him. That is what is needed. So in the chaos that is many of of what's happening, much of what's happening in our society, the busyness that is uh, happening in, in many of our lives, the things that flood our minds, the information that comes in so often, we need to take a breath and choose Jesus. And when we really choose Jesus in our hearts, it will really be amazing how things begin to go away from us, giving us an opportunity to pray clear-minded, and to think, what would Jesus have me do right now? So I want to encourage us again as we end this year, going into the new year, to choose Jesus. Yeah. This actually came up this week in my discipleship group with Carlisa and Catherine. And I was sharing with them how a friend had actually called, called me in a, different situ in a specific situation. She said, Jennifer, you can choose what's right or you can choose the relationship. Hmm. I thought, you're right. And the relationship was the better choice. Mm. And we were talking about it in our discipleship group, how so often we can, we're so convinced because we're right about something and we can just, sadly as moms, we can really hone in on that and as wives on our rightness instead of thinking about what's better. I will choose what's better. <laughs> So I, I really appreciate that. It's, it's, uh, it came up quite a bit this week. All right. Uh, next up, we have a report from our Charlotte chapter of Hope Worldwide. And following that, April Williams, who leads our children's ministry, she's got some shout outs to share. Take it away, Mike and Ann. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Dames, and I'm the director of the Charlotte chapter of Hope Worldwide. 2020 has been a challenging year, but God is still working. Due to the pandemic, some of our community partners were restricted from utilizing volunteers. As a result, we had to pivot away from some of our regular monthly service projects. We have had to rethink and identify how we can serve during this time. We've plugged into areas that had high needs and where we had resources and capacity to help. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This passage says that we are royal priests. The fourfold role of priest is to put God on display, to help people navigate atonement, to intercede on the behalf of others, and to distribute resources to those in need. This year, since the pandemic, we've been able to sponsor a school tools campaign, a Red Cross, Red Cross blood drive, and a canned good drive. We partnered with Loaves and Fishes and volunteers from Mount Carmel Baptist and started a mobile food pantry in our parking lot. As a result of this partnership, we've been able to provide weekly food boxes to families that live in the community surrounding the church building. We also began a partnership with Above and Beyond Learning Center to help serve children from the community. We've made some plans for the first quarter of 2021. 
This year, due to the pandemic, we will not host our regular MLK Day of Service project. However, on Monday, January the 18th, we would like to invite all brothers and sisters and friends from every nation, tribe, people, and language to a virtual program to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his legacy of service. This program will be shared kingdom-wide via Zoom. The theme is the beloved community. Our guest speakers will be Dr. Ben Barnett, Chief Evangelist for Hope Worldwide, author and kingdom teacher Michael Burns, and Kendall Baldwin, manager of U.S. Chapter Relations for Hope Worldwide. Our next blood drive will be on Saturday, February the 20th. And finally, we'll be partnering with Mecklenburg County to service residents that are under-resourced. The program that we will be using is called Getting Ahead, and it has the potential to provide people with a true pathway out of poverty. Each group will consist of 18 to 15 participants that will meet twice a week for 18 sessions. Participants will explore, investigate, and discover information that will help them to chart a course for a new future story. Participants will learn about the root causes of poverty, the truth about money, the hidden rules of economic class, 11 required resources to stabilize human life, how to complete individual as well as community resource analysis, and also how to create smart goals with plans. Upon graduation from Getting Ahead, HOPE will provide monthly support meetings and mentors for these men and women as they begin a new journey of creating and building resources. This will create multiple opportunities to expand our community partnership as others join this initiative. There will be many opportunities to get involved and to serve. Please look for future announcements regarding training for interested volunteers. Remember, HOPE stands for Helping Other People Everywhere. It was created by disciples for disciples to live out the serving aspects of Jesus' ministry. Thank you for your continued prayers and support. And please contact me if you have questions. I can be reached at MikeDames at Prodigy.net. Once again, that's MikeDames at Prodigy.net. Good morning, everyone. This is Rich and Sheila Bovard. We wanted to take this opportunity to talk with you about our experience working with the Lowe's and Fishes program on Mondays at the church office. This program has been coordinated for the last several months by Mike Dames in the Charlotte chapter of Hope Worldwide. Over the summer, both Rich and I took early retirements from our jobs as a result of the pandemic. So we decided we wanted to mo make the most of this opportunity to serve others who had been adversely affected by the pandemic. In 1 John 3, 17 through 18, it says, If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. And we know that God also asks us to love our neighbors. One thing we've noticed is that numerous participants of the Lowe's and Fishes food distribution actually walk to the church parking lot to receive their food. They truly are our neighbors. Jesus also said that the poor will always be with us. However, the negative impact of this pandemic has been so pervasive and worldwide, there are many people who find themselves now having difficulty getting enough food to eat when just a few months ago they never imagined being in this situation. So many jobs have been lost, so many businesses have closed. This program is making a real difference in our community helping people who are hurting. The Loaves and Fishes program provides a full week's worth of food for all the members of a family when they participate. Sheila and I have had the experience of seeing the gratitude and the thankfulness on the faces of all the people that come through the line to receive the food. We have really appreciated the opportunity to be able to volunteer to help people in our community through this program. We also want to take this opportunity to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Good morning. My name is Gary Boswell, and I would like to talk about serving. God commands us to serve. In Matthew 20, 28, Jesus tells us that he did not come here to be served, but to serve. Hope and the Charlotte Church have partnered with Loaves and Fishes to serve our community. And every Monday afternoon, Loaves and Fishes sends over a food pantry truck to our parking lot to distribute food to those that are in need. There is a bigger need today than ever before. 
with people getting furloughed or losing their jobs because of the pandemic. And the lines of cars keeps growing. Jesus tells us to take care of our neighbor and serving with loaves and fishes is the way that I have chosen to do so. The reward is far greater for me to see the smiles and the thankful attitudes of the people I serve in these events each week. 1 Peter 4.10 says, each of us should use whatever gifts we have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. Thank you. My name is Carmen Blackman. I'm the founder and executive director of Above and Beyond Students. And I am very pleased to come to you tonight just to briefly share with you how the Charlotte Church has been such a blessing to Above and Beyond Students and the families that we serve in the Charlotte Mecklenburg School community. Um, this summer, we had the privilege of hosting a summer camp at your church. And that led to us um, having a longer conversation as to how we could continue to support students via after school and using your church as a facility. And um, it has been such a blessing to the children. And I want to tell you a little bit about the children that attend your program. Just imagine waking up in the morning and your mother has gone off to work and you are expected to get on a computer, log in with your class, upload work and just um, be attentive to your teacher for three or four hours without any adult supervision. Well, your remote learning center at the Charlotte Church has allowed us to remove that barrier for children. Uh, we serve children in grades kindergarten through fifth grade at the church. They come Monday through Thursday from 7.30 to 4.30. They get breakfast, they get lunch, they do enrichment, they participate in activities. They even get to go outside on good days and play and have activities. So. Um, they get to interact, they get to have those social skills um, and develop those social skills just by interacting with other children. But most of all, they get to be under adult supervision and receive the love of Christ ministered to them through our instructors. Uh, the children absolutely love coming to the center. They um, even said, some of them have even said they don't even want to go back to school. Your church is the perfect facility for this, the space um, and, and just administration has been so supportive. And I cannot thank you enough for helping our children continue to learn. It has been quite a blessing for ABS and the families. Thank you. Good morning, church. The children's ministry has been so blessed to have continued classes for our second and third graders, as well as fourth and fifth graders, because of the hearts of our volunteer teachers. We say a special thank you and God bless to Kia Ramirez, Jessica Trammell, and Steve Connell. As you can see, God continues to work. And even though we are scattered right now, God continues to add to our brothers and sisters. We say welcome Fernando Lopez to the Charlotte Church family. And to Savion Gray, we say welcome home. We are so grateful to have both of you and we look forward to loving and growing and serving in the Lord together. Good morning, friends and family of the Charlotte Church. My name is John Basilio, and this is my beautiful wife, Migdalia. And we're honored that we have the opportunity to share communion this morning with you. I'm very grateful for Rodney and Jennifer uh, and encouraging us and allowing us to have this time to be able to share. You know, during this time, we uh, always have the liberty to choose a story in the Bible that gives us a, pers a perspective about Jesus that we can reflect on during communion. And there's this one story in particular in Luke chapter 10 that I'd like to focus our attention with what we're going to share this morning. In Luke 10 verse 38, it says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This story is a very familiar one to many of us, especially during this season. And, and during this season, we think like Martha, where we have a lot to do, a lot that we're worried about, a lot that we're anxious about. 
And yet Jesus has a different perspective when Martha asks for help. He says, look at Mary and do what she is doing, which is to sit at his feet, to be at his, with him in his presence. I am so grateful that this is in the Bible and that I can read it over and over and over again. I find myself learning from it um, in deeper ways throughout my life and throughout my faith and my walk with God. Um, I just think about the holidays and COVID and how I know I wanted to get the house cozy and warm and decorated because we we can't have family, we can't have friends. And so I found myself getting really caught up in those kinds of setups so that the kids can be encouraged, so that we can be encouraged. And I found myself just getting, like Martha, caught up, although they were good things, but I feel like God's taught me so much because um, I've learned to just put things down and just sit with my children. I had hoped that I created an environment to connect with my children and those very things were keeping me from connecting emotionally with them. And it was so wonderful to just sit down, put the phone down, put the planning down, just look at them, just talk with them, paint my nails with one of my girls or sit next to my son as he likes to play, he likes to play video games. and just laugh with them and discover who they are at this time in their lives. So I'm very grateful that I've been able to do that. But God is so good because even with that, he's taught me, hey, I miss you. I want to spend time with you. And just like I long to connect with my children and just discover them and, and enjoy them, that's how Father wants to enjoy us. He just longs for us to be with him and to discover um, his love in a deeper level and to learn about who he is in our lives. I found that that has given me so much peace no matter what the circumstances, situations are happening. We're in challenging times, family situations, friend situations. Sometimes you feel like, oh my goodness. But when you just stop and quiet, your heart and quiet yourselves and like Mary, just sit and choose the better portion. Um, like Jesus said, he says that it will be given to her. And I'm just so grateful for that. Amen. You know, McDaddy and I this month celebrate 20 years of marriage. <laughs> we have three teenagers in the house and we recently experienced an incredible move, another move uh, in our <laughs> crazy 20 years of marriage. We've moved 14 times. Uh, in, that, in that time. So yes, please pray for my wife. Um, mm -hmm. In this recent move, we uh, moved five months ago from the Triangle Church area to the Piedmont Triad Church. And uh, it, during that time, they, we experienced a lot of anxiety. I know I did and trying to prepare. And obviously that uh, decision wasn't made lightly. We prayed, we fasted, we sought advice, and we listened to the Spirit of God. And I believe that God was present and is present in this time with us as we learn to invite him into our day-to-day -day today. And let me tell you, I, I, the question that keeps coming to my mind all the time is, and I think it's an important question for all of us, is do I want him? Do I want him over everything? You know, as Christians, we want to do a lot for him. Uh, sometimes we want a lot of things from him. You know, especially, you know, during this time, all the things my wife mentions. Of course, you know, in our 20 years of marriage, I've seen my wife go through a lot of health issues and I wanted to see her healed. And maybe you're going through something very difficult with your health or your job. We've been in situations where I've lost jobs and where I haven't had uh, at least a plan on how to take care of our needs. And I felt anxious and all that. And the question that always keeps coming up is, am I enough for you? Wow. Do Is it okay that just... I'm with you and I'm walking you through these things. That's right. And you know what? It is enough. It is everything that we need. Right. And so as you take communion this morning, I want to encourage us to remember that it's not about what he can give you or what he's done for you, but the fact that he is with you right. and that he wants you to be with him as we deal with everything that comes our way this year, next year, and for the day that he calls us home, let us be familiar with the one who wants us to be with him for eternity. Right. Why do you want to be in heaven? Isn't it to be with him? Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to focus on today and always. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we are very thankful 
that today and always we can give you our needs, our concerns, our doubts, our, our fears, our, our wanting to control, and Father, to lay ourselves at your feet and to listen to you, to be with you, to walk with you, to experience you. And Father, as we take the bread and as we take the juice that represents your broken body, the blood that was shed, remind us, God, always that it's about relationship, mm -hmm. wanting to be with us. Father, you wanted us to be with you in the beginning and during the garden, and you want us to be together now and always. Father, lead us and guide us. Father, thank you for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Next up, we have Paulette Sifford. And hopefully all of you know this, but at the beginning of the year, Paulette took the role of working with our older women and our younger generation women. Mm -hmm. And I am so personally grateful. Yes. The yes. older women in our family, in our fellowship, they needed and deserved care and attention. And I felt honestly guilty because they weren't getting the attention that they needed. And she, Paulette, has just taken them, wrapped her arms around them, and has done an incredible job of being diligent and thoughtful in her care of these older women. Thank you so much, Paulette. In addition, she and I are working together with uh, women that are in their 20s to really disciple them, train them, pour ourselves into them, and raise them up so that they can influence others. And we are looking to grow that group. So those of you who are in your 20s, we're looking for you. And right now, Paulette's going to go ahead and share what's been going on in her ministry. Good morning. My name is Paulette Sifford, and I wanted to, as 2020 is coming to a close, I wanted to share with you some things that have been very encouraging to me and very special and very inspiring to me this year. And one of those things is my friendships and my partnerships with women in the church. And I think about my uh, friendships and partnerships with women like Kendra Walker, who was my right-hand woman and is still my friend, even though she's moved away to Arizona. I think about Denise Brown, who has been instrumental in helping me as I lead the women in our family group. Gloria Kelly, who has been an incredible mentor and inspiration to me as she lives her life. Uh, I think about Amanda Taylor, who I've known for many years, and yet this was the year Amanda Taylor and I decided that we were going to be great friends and we were going to walk through this life together. I think about April McLeod, who is my prayer warrior and uh, faithful, faithful prayer warrior. I think about Jasmine Hinkle, who recently moved here and has been just a great friend to me. And we have walked life together. But I also think about the relationship and the partnership that I have with Jennifer Fuller. I met Jennifer Fuller in the late 1980s. We were young women, but we were also very young in our faith um, and in our learning about God and in our discipleship. And now 30 plus years later, God has definitely put us back together and it's amazing to see how he is fostering and maturing our relationship, but also really helping us to have an incredible partnership, to have an impact on some of the younger women in the church. So in March of this year, we started a group called the Grateful Eight. It was a group of young women under the age of 30. And in this time, we have seen these women not only grow in their discipleship, but also their love and their passion for God, their conviction and their eagerness to learn. So as we go into 2021, we are, Jennifer and I are really looking to see these women just continue to grow in their uh, discipleship and their spirituality and their relationship with God. But we also want to see this group grow as we add more women to this number. And so if you're interested, if you're eager to learn, if you want to grow in your discipleship and your relationship with God, just let us know. We would love to have you. And on that note, we love how God helps our church family to continue to grow. And I would love to share about and extend a very warm welcome to the rest of our new members who moved to Charlotte in 2020. And that is Anthony and Sandy Petty. Onesimus and Miata Thompson, 
Blake and Kaylee Batters, Shola Omanaje, Chris and Lucy Ward, Marvin and Madeline Sandoval, and last but not least, Kiki Broadnax. Welcome home. Good morning, Charlotte. We want to continue with sharing some great news, encouraging things that God, the Holy Spirit, has been doing throughout the Charlotte Church this year in 2020. I want to start out, though, by reading a, a passage of Scripture from Luke 15 in verses 20 to 24. The Bible says this. It says, So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. You know, God says in Psalm 127 that he gives to the beloved even in their sleep. God has been working. And even though it may not have seemed like it, Lots of great victories and celebrations have been had here in the Charlotte Church. And we are so excited about all the people who have been restored to Jesus Christ this year. Amen. You know, I love that. It says, so they began to celebrate. You know, brothers and sisters, this is a time that we do need to celebrate. Uh, the baptisms, the people coming back to to God and to his church and uh, I just want to read off the names of the people that have come back this year. Regina Jenkins, Michael Torres, April McLeod, Jackie Scott, and Tony Scott, and Justin Hicks. What an incredible day to celebrate these brothers and sisters. And you know, Ron, there's other things too that we can celebrate. Yes. You know, our Care and Compassion Ministry that uh, is up and running with Margot and Bev and Greg Wacker and Stephanie Dixon has pitched in a lot too. But they, they write get well cards to, to people who are sick and people who have lost loved ones. They have a monthly prayer time where they pray for those that are sick and in need. They um, have a senior agape program, and this is a, a home where two of our sisters live, and they take cards and fruit baskets and really give to the, to the people that live there. Um, they send grief books to those who have lost a spouse or a parent or a child, which is, that's got to be so encouraging because it is a very difficult thing to go through those things. They also have something where... They want to get our bodies moving. They've called it temple care, taking care of our bodies. And 20 people met in the parking lot, uh, physically distanced and masks, and they celebrated and are moving their bodies. So those are things we can celebrate too. Yes. You got something else? Oh, my goodness. How encouraging was it this year when all of us met together uh, as a North Carolina fellowship. Oh. When we had our worship service with all the churches throughout North Carolina, we expressed our love, we expressed our unity, we expressed uh, the obvious worship and praise to God. Mm -hmm. And it was so encouraging to be together with our brothers and sisters uh, here in Charlotte, but also in Greensboro, in Triangle, in Jacksonville, in Fayetteville, in Asheville, in Wilmington, and in Boone, what a great celebration that was. But also, what a great victory and celebration it was when we had the Africa worship service. Mm -hmm. That was so encouraging and so much fun as we were able to worship with our brothers and sisters from South Africa, West Africa, and East Africa, mm -hmm. especially East Africa, because that's on our heart. We have a special bond uh, mm -hmm. and a relationship with the brothers and sisters throughout East Africa. Those churches in Kenya and in Rwanda and Burundi, 
and also Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Uganda. We support those churches yes. along with Boone in our uh, annual missions contribution. Um, and we're so excited that we could share in a worship with all of them uh, this past year. And I do pray that all of us will continue to have on our heart and we'll be able to sacrifice and give to that missions goal as uh, we're shooting for a goal of $110,000. But that's not all. We also had incredible uh, sacrifice and demonstration of love by the church uh, this past year. You know, when, when COVID hit uh, so hard throughout the world and, and of course throughout Africa in a special way, brothers and sisters there not only lost jobs, um, but they also uh, got to a point where many of them were unable uh, to feed their families. Wow. And when we mentioned that to you, to the Charlotte Church, within two weeks, uh, or even less than that, we were able to raise $36,700 mm -hmm. uh, for our brothers and sisters to provide food and meals for our families to the point where we've been told that all of the needs of our brothers and sisters have been met uh, because of your sacrifice and the Amen. sacrifice of others. What a great victory that was. Amen. Well, and I have other good news too. Mm. Um, this past Saturday, we had a drive-in movie night for the leaders, those people that lead small groups, the people that lead in ushering or Kids Kingdom or just people that lead and serve in our church. And it was incredible. It was a lot of fun. But the really cool thing is that there were like four people from the neighborhood that just kind of drove up and said, hey, what's going on? And uh, we were able to, to share with them, and Paulette was able to get their numbers and give them uh, the, the information so that they could tune in this morning. So I just want to say a shout out to if you're in the neighborhood around Ashley Road and you're watching us, welcome to our service today. But I know that's not all. No, no. Uh, super encouraging this past year was really the efforts uh, and love given by the MMOG Ministries uh, and a special shout out to Tim Kirk, uh, Anthony Famularo, and many others uh, that have sacrificed and participated in that. But on October 3rd, they were able to uh, gather together with about 35 disciples from Charlotte and from our sister churches in North Carolina. And through the contribution of nearly 100 disciples, they were able to give $4,000 worth of supplies, blankets and and clothes and shoes and uh, various things that people need uh, and hand those out to 125 neighbors who were living in Tent City wow. here in Charlotte. Uh, they were able to uh, hand out coffee and donuts in the morning with all of them and then have prayer and fellowship and, and share uh, the gospel with mm -hmm. people and then uh, close that out with a lunch that was provided by the food trucks that were there. That was incredibly encouraging. And um, we just really celebrate together with our brothers and sisters there. And they continue uh, to, to give and meet needs uh, throughout our region here in Charlotte uh, for those that are hurting and those in need. And we celebrate that great victory. Uh, that's Amen. being like Jesus. That's loving and really caring. Amen for the hurting in our city. Amen. But that's not all. Last Amen. but not least, we've got some encouraging news. Yes, this is, uh, this is a very sweet announcement that I'm about to make. Um, we want to honor today Miss Arizona. Mm. She uh, is going to be 89 years young this week. Wow. And that is, to me, I just, I love you, Miss Arizona, and there are so many people in the church that love you dearly, and we are so happy to be able to celebrate you uh, this coming week. Uh, we love you, we miss you, and uh, congratulations, and uh, thank you for everything that you've done and the way you encourage people when you are at church, your smile, your laughter, asking about our children, everything. You are very, very special to so many people. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. And I know there's more good news after this. Amen. 
As we come to a close, uh, Jennifer and I would like to share that we have committed our hearts uh, to the Charlotte Church and the disciples here. Mm -hmm. um, and we have come to love uh, this church and the disciples that are here. And uh, we call out to God and his great power to move all of us by his spirit. And remember that even in the face of challenge, God continues to work. And Satan tries to cover our minds and cover our eyes and block us uh, from seeing the great things that God is doing and the lives that he's actually moving, the hearts that he's changing. And remember Elijah at one point, right after uh, this great victory against the prophets of Baal, uh, he's running for his life because uh, Jezebel is after him and he thought he was the only one. And God told him, I reserve seven thousand in Israel who have not bowed the knee or kissed Baal. Seven thousand, right? So God is always working, even when we don't know it, or maybe especially uh, when we don't know it. And there are even, uh, there's so many more disciples that are allowing God to do great work through them. And we're so appreciative. And one couple uh, we'd like to mention is Kevin and Alex Sampson. Uh, they moved here uh, a few years ago from Washington, D.C., and have really become great friends. And uh, Kevin and Alex have uh, committed to working along with our singles ministry in the year of 2021. And we're so excited. We think they have so much to offer. And you see the picture of them uh, there. And uh, w along with a host of other mature disciples, they will work to bring the light of Christ to the increasing population of men and women in the Charlotte region. Yeah, sometimes friendships begin in kind of unlikely ways. Alex and I, about a year and a half ago, we actually road tripped together to go visit Carlisa when she was in the hospital. And this was the first time Alex and I had spent any significant time together. And just immediately we found we were kindred spirits. So much, both of us, just lots of ideas, lots of energy. We really feed off each other. And she's really, um, She's got so much to offer. She mm -hmm. does so much. I don't really actually know how she does it all. But I just am very grateful for her heart, for her willingness to serve, and for her partnership. And I look forward to that growing and working together closer in the next year. Amen. And you know, there's a, we have a group here in the church called MMOG, or Mighty Men of God. And uh, they, throughout the year, have done some real grassroots work uh, with a number of people, including uh, the men, women, and children in what is called Tent City here in Charlotte. And as you know, uh, there are tent cities in many major cities across America, and these are uh, poverty-stricken, downtrodden uh, families, individuals um, that need help that need someone to listen, that need someone to care. And Tim and his team, uh, along with Anthony Familero, who's like his uh, right there with him, and, and a host of other brothers and sisters, again, have done grassroots work uh, at listening, meeting the needs of these individuals. And um, I believe that their hands-on and upfront work that they have done uh, is an upward call to all of us. Um, and I think challenges us to be more and more like Jesus uh, among the poor. We also, Ron and I, lead a group called the Rise Up Old Men of God uh, group. And they are brothers uh, early 20s uh, up to late 30s. And these are a group of young men that we're really focused on to raise up, to lead, and to set examples uh, in the church. Mm -hmm. And as we know, we need to continue raising uh, young men, young women up uh, to take uh, reins uh, and take the work forward. And uh, they have uh, really allowed Ron and I to teach them, to work with them. Uh, and we're really encouraged by, by those young men. Kevin is one of those brothers. Uh, Kevin Sampson is one of those uh, young men as well. And they've allowed themselves to be challenged and encouraged by one another as we all strive to build what we call a community of brothers. 
uh, that we're really helping one another, we're sharpening each other, uh, building deeper and deeper relationship with God, and helping each other uh, find strength in Him. I wanted to share with you how grateful I am working with the women on staff here in Charlotte. Lavanya, Paulette, Crystal, Jasmine, Melissa, all of them, we make, a, we make a team. And when we're together, we have a good time. We pray about you. We think about you. Sisters, please know that. You are on our minds and we are constantly uh, wanting to be our best for you. Mm. And we talk with elders wives, with Bonnie, with Susan, with Evelyn about how to best serve and care for all of you. So please know that and 2021 is going to be a fruitful year. Um, and again, as we, as we close today, um, we hope that this day has encouraged you. Uh, all the, the great news that you've, that you've heard, and this is just a piece of what has happened. And these new births, the baptisms, those that have moved in, those have been, that have been restored to Christ. God is working. Be encouraged by that, brothers and sisters. And as we close out, enjoy this last song. And we pray, Jennifer and I pray, that you allow the light of the Lord to shine in your life with wisdom, strength, and love. Amen. Amen. sisters, Rodney and Ron here. We've got a couple of things that we want to share with you and two things that we want to ask you. I want to bring you up to speed with um, Aaliyah Babel. You know, for quite some time, we've been praying for her and uh, the cancer that she has. Well, as a result, uh, Robbie and Bernice have started a GoFundMe page uh, for her. 
And as you know, she has an inoperable tumor and it's a rare form of cancer. And so the doctors have recommended an experimental therapy that they want to start uh, with her in the hopes of defeating this cancer. And again, so they've started this GoFundMe uh, page. And the cool thing is the goal is $20,000, but already they're over half there. So they're over $10,000 already uh, in that effort. And so we want to ask uh, all of you that are listening that if you, whatever you can give to this effort to help our sister Aaliyah would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And this money will go towards the procedure, uh, uh, equipment that uh, they need and other uh, things that will help them along uh, in this in this time. And we're, we're praying for her and really praying that God will do a miracle here. We're praying for her body uh, to be strengthened because again, the tumor that uh, she has is inoperable. So uh, let's stay on our knees uh, with God to uh, really help her. But if you can give whatever amount you can give to this GoFundMe page would be uh, so appreciated. And the information uh, should be showing right now on the screen with how you can give to that. So thank you very much. And also, we want to give you an update on the mission's contribution. You know, just a short while ago, it was looking like we had quite a ways to go and a challenge. And in this last week, God has blessed the Charlotte Church and all of you who have given from your heart so sacrificially. Amen. And our goal, which is $110,000 uh, for missions, we are now at $101,000. So I want to, first of all, praise God for that Amen. and thank God. And I want to thank you for the incredible sacrifice and the great hearts that you have demonstrated in giving. And let's finish this goal. We still have two and a half weeks left uh, to be able to give. So let's all of us uh, be praying and preparing and planning to make a sacrifice and give to this mission's contribution so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be taken and spread to all of East Africa and to our mission team in Boone that we can continue supporting all of those great churches and works. And again, thank you for your sacrifice Amen. so far. Let's keep praying that we go beyond this goal. Amen.